That's both on the video. Thank you, Yvonne, and thanks for the invitation. So, uh, I usually work on scanning amplitudes. Actually, some of my amplitude friends are here, but uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you about this other stuff I've been working on lately. And I realized after I sent my file to you uh, and that it's uh, a bit long and kind of a mouthful, so it, it, might, it might have scared some of the uh, non string theories away. So, actually, on the plane, I came up with a sexier title. Uh, <laughs> even though the super in each word doesn't have anything to do with each other. Uh, it can be a, paper, a title for a second paper. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, so, so this is some fun that summer project that started at TASIC uh, in June. So actually, I also see some of my TASIC friends around. And uh, uh, so both uh, me and my office mate Justin uh, were there as students, and Yuji was a, a, a lecturer, and he was talking about some of the things that I'm going to describe today, and and we got interested in, in sort of trying to understand uh, an extent of the things he talked about. Uh, we started collaborating with him, and it was very efficient since I went to Europe for the summer, and he was in Japan, and there was more or less eight hours difference between each one of us. Uh, so it was, uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, okay, so let me start with just some general blah blah. Which, uh, okay, we know that now that uh, anomalies uh, are a very useful and general tool to study uh, strongly coupled physics. So by anomalies, I mean two anomalies. Uh, uh, so these anomalies are not bad. So uh, so this is just an ambiguity of the partition function uh, when it's coupled to a background field. So it's some obstruction to gauging. Uh, Background field to be symmetric, G bundle, spin structure, etc. etc. Uh, and, and these are things that uh, have many applications, so they, they, they are constant along RG flow, so one can do the anomaly matching, so there's some like, famous applications of these to like DCD kind of Lagrangian, and, and also uh, through inflow that I will talk about a little bit, uh, have been used to understand very complicated systems like. Uh, like uh, the, the theories that live on the of impact rates. Uh, and uh, over the last years, there's been quite a bit of progress, for, uh, especially in the case of discrete symmetries. There's a finite group, and reversal orientation. And the, the picture that has emerged is basically that uh, some anomaly in the dimensions is captured by some STP phase in one higher dimension. And this is a physical realization all this story of anomaly polynomials, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, we know we knew about for quite a few years, uh, but it has also been extended for like, global anomalies. And that's a much better understanding, and there have been many developments in both in high end physics, I think, and that's matter, and a lot of crosstalk between the two systems. So there's uh, some questions that you might ask, which is well, are there any applications of this in string theory or in dimensional CFD in general? Uh, so this was the goal of my talk. It's, I'm going to uh, talk about two applications of anomalies and, and symmetry protected topological phases in, in string theory. Uh, and let's see, the first one is going to be about GSO projections. I will explain what that is, uh, since I guess there's this audience. Uh, and, um, and we'll see how SPT phases provide some systematic way of classifying all these different GSO projections and finding all possible string theories. Uh, and the second application is going to be about deep rates. Uh, and uh, basically, this will be done by securing open states uh, that have some boundary. Uh, and this will allow us to uh, find a different group to, uh, to understand why, uh, why deep rates are classified by, by K theory, which is something that we've known for about 20 years. OK, so this is the outline. Uh, I'll just review some basic facts about SPTs. I will explain what I mean by them. Uh, so there's different points of view, and that's matter of energy, uh, and, and some basic basic things that we need to know. Uh, then uh, I will explain uh, how we get GSO projections from SPT phases. Uh, and I will apply for oriented strings, and we'll see that there's a famous SPT, the tab chain, that will play a role here. Uh, and also for unoriented strings, so for strings and oriented poles, and you will see that the time, time reversal invariant uh, time chain is one that, uh, that is important. And then we'll tell you about the and how this has to do with the boundary fermions on 
strings, etc. Et okay, so the basics. For my purposes, uh, an SCT phase is just an invertible topology filter. So what I mean by that? So it's a theory that has a unique ground state, an enclosed manifold, M. Uh, so for me, M, most of the time will be a torus or some other analytic surface or some surface with boundary when I can have a little bit of what it is. Uh, and then uh, the partition function is just a phase. Uh, but it's a phase that has to be consistent under all the ways that we have had in including the surfaces so, so that it defines a proper uh, topological uh, field theory. Okay, so this is just something that for a given manifold is going to give me some number. Uh, but equivalently, we can think of okay, so symmetry uh, word is in the name. Uh, so there's going to be some kind of symmetry. Uh, and we can couple our system to uh, some background field for that symmetry. And uh, the SMP is going to be some choice of the action for that background field. Okay, so uh, an example, uh, which is perhaps more familiar, is uh, uh, some thick angle for for a billion or not a billion gauge theory. So this is something like a topological term that we can add uh, uh, and it will be different in different sectors. So for, for each different field configuration, we will give a different number. Okay. Although we will mostly be focused on, on discrete symmetries and for our applications. Okay. So this, if we specify some some uh, G bundle of our manifold, this will just output some, some number that has to be and there's some dual picture that is very useful, which is instead of thinking about the G bundle, which is specified by a bunch of transition functions in different patches, we can think about some network of defects. So in two dimensions, which we would be interested in, uh, these are just uh, a bunch of lines. And each one is associated to some element of the group, and as I cross it, it acts on whatever crosses it. So you can think of this as a like basically the transition function. Okay. So this gets more interesting in the presence of a boundary, but you all know. Uh, I already advanced this, so what happens when you have a boundary, so it seems that without a boundary in the closed manifold, it's a bit boring because this is just some place and it's not like very <coughs> much dynamic. But uh, on the boundary, we know that, uh, that there has to be some theory there that uh, has an anomaly. And the intuition is that um, there's some three dimensional SVT phase here, and if we do a gauge transformation, uh, then the partition function is not going to be gauge invariant, and there's going to be some boundary term that will have to be canceled by the theory at the bottom. So this is just the usual picture of, of anomaly. There is a very well known example, which is the, the anomaly, a like anomaly in 2D, which is the Charles of Bermion, and uh, there's some bulk SPT, which is a 3D Charles Eichmann theory, the one that cancels uh, cancel this anomaly. Again, this is some case for some continuous symmetry, uh, and for our applications, we will be using this. Uh, and also, let me say that by discrete symmetry, so sometimes SPTs are defined uh, uh, relative to some trivial phase where, where there is no symmetry, but because we will most of the dealing theories of fermions, we will always have fermion parity. So, and if you talk to them, that is an SPT or not, but for me, that's an SPT that has some symmetry, which is like. For a lot of people, this is a review, but uh, uh, going to set up the stage. And then, well, this, this theory is uh, actually can be classified, and the intuition is because uh, you can stack these theories together and, and add some deformations, and it turns out that they form a group. Uh, and some d dimensional SPTs are classified by orthogonal groups, so these are equivalence classes of, of manifolds. Uh, with uh, some specified structure. So for us, the specified structure will be maybe some symmetry, uh, some G bundle, uh, and then some tension structure. So this could be a spin structure, an orientation, uh, something that has to do with the tension bundle. In, in the given dimension, uh, the equivalence classes are, uh, well, we have some manifold, and if there exists a one higher dimension manifold that interpolates between this one and that one, uh, 
while keeping all these structures smooth in between, then we say that these two are in the same class. And what are partition functions? Partition functions is just something that for any given manifold with some structure gives me phase. So these are just uh, the dual. So they generate borders and classes, which I will denote that is inverted omega, uh, which is just some map from these classes of these manifolds to the UI. So there's a, it, it's been, Took some work to, to, to arrive to this understanding of, of how to classify SPT faces, but now um, we believe this, this is a way of doing it, and, and these things can be computed using some uh, mathematical machinery, which I won't be talking about. Uh, but believe me that this thing can be computed. And the ones we will need for my talk uh, will be the following. Uh, by the way, but the, the way you define only contains the finite the whole jump. That's right. No, the Z. Right. The Z. The Z. Yeah, so, so it's a torsion, the, the torsion part of these, these guys. Yeah. So for instance, this I will be capturing some church angles <coughs> and some gravitational anomaly. Okay, so we will need the following ones. So some of them are very common here. So this is just uh, some like, spin manifolds in 2D. Uh, and, and there's a classification into Z2, and, and there's like a trivial phase, and then it's called the Arfic variant, which uh, I, will, I will describe later. Uh, I can have a uh, spin manifold with some Z2 bundle, and in, in this case, I have um, um, a Z2 squared classification, and we can think of it as a pair of spin structures, which will also play a role. Uh, uh, a, a more interesting one is this ADK variant. So this is when we have some pin minus structures. So this is what we consider spinners on an unrelated manifold, which again, I will uh, explain in more detail. So there's two different ways of, of doing this. So, uh, what is the minus structure? What is the plus? And, and basically, the ABK invariant is a partition function for uh, that generates uh, uh, this class of, of SPTs, and the arc invariant of the implementation double power generates the other one. And again, I will explain what all of these things are. I just wanted to list them. And finally, there's something new that we have to define for, 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 for talking about string theory, which Called the B pin or double pin structure. Uh, then the C2 classification. Uh, part of it is again the occupying of the double cover. Part of it is just some bosonic SPT. And this is some number that, uh, that it, it, this thing just gives a minus one on some unrated surface uh, if, if we add it. Uh, and basically, in string theory, this will make the difference between different kinds of oriented Double pin is uh, T2 one of the general, the same as the pin plus? Yeah. Uh, at least on unoriented surfaces. How far away? Unoriented. So I won't be talking much about the pin plus case because it's in the, in the second generator is W1 square of the uh, engine bomb is based on the <coughs> pocket circuit. Every time I write simple windy classes, uh, as I said, otherwise it would be a potential. So this is, you can think of this as a gauge field for orientation. So you know, the, you know the physics for this term corresponding to another chain of the speed. Uh, the how they? Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's talk about string theory. So we want to describe GSO projections first for oriented strings. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll see how it relates to this entire chain, which is one of the most famous things uh, Okay, so string theory 101. Uh, for my purpose, a string theory is just some 2D CFT that will have some work. Okay, and it's defined on some 2D surface, which I will call a worksheet. And when this worksheet doesn't have a boundary, then I will call the string close. And when it has a boundary, I will call them open strings, and, and the endpoints will see them what are called so This is a schematic picture of some open string which is propagating. So the worship is just the, uh, the kind of <coughs> surface in space time along which the string propagates. And if it has boundary, those have to lie on some plane, uh, which is a different. And then we will also be talking about oriented poles. Uh, and this, from the space time perspective, is a bit tricky to describe what it is. But, uh, from, from, from the string perspective, it's just that one also has to include uh, other surfaces. So for open strings, it would be 
a prime model for circuit plugs, obvious treatment for flow streams. So the string theory on, on this 2D worksheet, actually the geometry is dynamical. So we have some quantum gravity theory on, on the worksheet. So we must sum over all, all geometrical structures. And in particular, we sum over like metric or conformal classes. Uh, it's well known that this tells us that we need to have like bent spacing and agents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also have to sum over spin structures. And possibly, if we are not very interval, we will have to also sum over different surfaces. Uh, and then there's another way of thinking about uh, this sum over spin structures, which is more familiar for people who learn string theory, which is just gauging uh, this, this, this symmetry. So for me, a number, uh, by gauging, I mean projecting onto some, um, um, some subspace of the Hilbert space that, that has certain, uh, like, that it's even or odd under, under this operation. And, and the way we will realize this is by adding these lines on, on our 2D manifold that will effectively uh, uh, create a projector for, for this symmetry. And again, when we sum our unoriented surfaces, this is the same as gauging Moshi party, which is how we talk about it in, in the string theory textbook. But uh, from the point of view of SPTs, it will be more natural to think about time reversal. Uh, so again, just summing that, uh, gauging time reversal. Uh, and I will refer to both of these things collectively as GSO projections. Uh, and I want to understand wh what are all the ways that I can do this. And this will give me all string theories. Okay. And, and the point is that the answer is not unique. Because this is just going to tell me that I have to sum over different sectors. Uh, but there is some ambiguity because I could add some phase in between. It's, well, I will explain why you kind of have something which is not a phase. Uh, or a little sketch. Argument, but, uh, um, but there's some ambiguity. Uh, so we have to understand what are, what are the choices. So the usual textbook about just projection, we can use one of the parking function motor environment to argue that. <coughs> you give a different picture or? So let me go to the next slide, oh, because it's precisely <laughs> going to answer your question. Uh, so the traditional approach of, of, of finding what are the allowed phases is, uh, okay, we know that consistence of the 2D CFT has to do with modular invariance of the torus partition function, and this has related to the fact that you should define like a proper quantum field theory that could cut and glue like, different surfaces, right? And, and traditionally, people use the modular invariance of the torus partition function to find the allowed combination. So they just made an ansatz, they post modular invariance, and they see like, which combinations are modular invariant. Okay, so for instance, previously, there's a difference between type 2 A string theory and type 2 B, which is a sign on the left moving Ramon Ramon sector. So, what, what do we have here? This is uh, an insertion of minus 1 to the F line. So, traditionally, we, we have, uh, we, if we don't have any lines inserted, we have the strings that have anti periodic boundary conditions. Uh, uh, so, if we add a line, then it's going to get an extra minus sign when you go around this cycle, and, and this is going to become periodic. So, this is Ramon Ramon. This is a uh, Ramon Vance, and it's R, and, and, and there is an ambiguity uh, to have a, a, a model invariant partition function, which is on the left moving uh, uh, fermions, uh, I could have a plus or a minus for the Ramon Ramon sector, and that distinguishes between type 2 A and type 2 B. <coughs> and of course, I could also have this on the other side. I will cover that. Another example is discrete torsion to the orbit. So we know that when we have some orbifold, again, we have to insert lines. So like a vertical line is going to change the Hilbert space if we think of this as time. And this is will just be some operator acting on this Hilbert space. So we need to uh, sum over all twisted sectors with all possible insertions of the symmetry generators. And it, again, Bath, I guess, uh, a while ago, um, um, uh, explained that there's some ambiguity with the same choice of faces. Uh, that, uh, that are called discrete torsion. Now we understand this also as an as a case, uh, but I, I won't say much about that. Just this just to illustrate that there's uh, some methods that you can get out of out of modular invariance to, to answer this question. Excuse me, you say who say that square law? Uh, this ambiguity. Yeah. Uh, so in the string theory literature, uh, was Bach who described why these things are like in H two of 
symmetry, so once I gauge it, then this thing is not an SPT. Uh, the, the intuition is that before I gauge, I need to add this SPT to the string worksheet, sheet, and that will generate the right traces uh, as I go along. Okay. Does it make sense? Right. So let's start with type 2, which is the most familiar string, class of string theories. Okay. And we will work in this NSR formalism, like in gauge, so we have like 8 fermions of each kind, left moving and right moving, they're Majorana vial fermions. Um, and in type 2 string theory, they have uh, independent state structures. Okay, so I have uh, some left moving fermion number, which I can associate to some left moving state structure, uh, and some right moving fermion number, which I can associate to a right moving state structure. And how do we implement this in practice? Well, we need to use uh, some Carl's into bundle. In principle, we could have some spin structure in our manifold, a familiar one, but then if we have some Z2 bundle that only acts on the left movers, then that effectively is a spin structure for the left movers, and then the combination with the usual spin structure gives me a spin structure for the, for the right movers. Okay. So this is just, uh, like, what structure do we have on this manifold? We're going to have, before gauging, we're going to have a choice of spin structure and a choice of the Z2 bundle. And we know how to classify the SPTs that, that have that, that structure. And this is just this cohortism group. Uh, and it's in two squared, but it's just generated by, by this solution. How do I see the Z2 here? What, what, how does the Z2 act? So you this run Z2? down two R invariants, but. This what? one? <coughs> no, no. The, this one. Yeah. yeah. So this is one that, uh, acts basically on. This is going to act only on the left movers. So this is no, no trivial element of, of, of Z2. Uh, so you can think of this actually as like minus 1 to the F left. Well, it would act at by conjugation, but you can think of it. And then that thing times the ordinary diagonal Fermi number. I think in condensed matter, people particularly care the 2 plus 1 in the 3D of this group, which gives a ZA class. Right. And as it is, we call some internal chiral Z2 symmetry, exon, left, but not right. Right. We may say this is what we get. So I won't talk about this here, but that group is also important here because, of course, we are gauging this, these bundles, right? We, make, we need to make sure that there is no anomaly uh, in, in, in gauging that. And, and, and the possible anomalies are going to be classified by the, the one higher dimension group. And, and that's the eight. That tells us that we need at least eight fermions. <coughs> so again, it tells us that the space time dimension is 10. So, so that's another application that uh, I decided not to. But of course, uh, because we are summing all these things, we need to make sure that we have So this theory has no whole now. Right. Into the right. capture by 3D. Right. Yeah. 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 Ye
system. And it also means that there's a way you can gap the a left fermion and a right fermions by interactions without breaking the symmetry. Right. You can add a master. Actually, more complicated master. Not master. For this case? Yeah, for this case, you can add a master. Because that will be the right movie thing. That also means you can. You have, oh, that's right. That's it depends on how you turn. Yeah, 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 that's right. Actually, that will be broad in terms. Okay, so what about this arc? What is this arc invariant? Uh, so this is the topology of the filter that describes the large limit of and chain is familiar. That's matter. And there's different ways of describing it. One way of thinking about it is mod to index of the Kyle Dirac operator. But uh, for our purposes, it's just something that gives you a plus sign uh, in every spin structure except for the Ramon 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 spin structure. So we see that if I add this phase or I don't add it before gauging spin structures, I'm going to get actually a torque entry. But wait a second. Uh, here there are like two Z2s, right? Where, whereas I think there's only one, like there's only two theories. So, so what is going on? Okay, so what is the difference between type A and type B? I already explained. And let's remind ourselves that in current <coughs> language, there's another way of thinking about this arc invariant, which is uh, if, you, if I just calculate the partition function with fixed spin structure for my Arana fermion with mass m, then if I change the sign of the mass, that, that is related to the, to the other sign by, by this arc invariant. So you can think of this as, as uh, again, some sort of anomaly. Uh, and, and of course, this doesn't depend on the mass, so I could set the mass to zero. And, and this thing can be implemented by flipping the sign of, of one of these guys. Okay. So if now I make some transformation, which from the space time point of view needs to be a symmetry, so this is just a party transformation in space time, where I take one of the fermions, one. So I said there, wasn't, there were no anomalies, but that is because uh, whenever I think about Borsch operations, this acts on all fermions at once. <coughs> From the space time perspective, I could make this operation, change the sign, and that is going to generate like one copy of the left moving and one copy of the right moving arc invariants. Uh, so, so this is just going to cancel. Like if I add it on both sides, I can remove it by by, by just doing this operation. And effectively, there's only two theories instead of one. Uh, but you can think of them as there's actually four theories, and two of them are related by some like space time target transformation. For instance, in type, in type 2b, there is some choice whether the uh, B field is, <coughs> sorry, whether some forms are self dual or anti self dual, and, and this is related to that. Uh, but effectively, there's only one here. Wait, just make sure. Yeah. Because there's condensed methodologies in yeah. DB. So the difference between two type of type 2 theory is based on the summation gauging. Deeper by this term, minus one up. Yeah, so there's no, right. no, so the, the difference is just adding uh, one of them oh. to the left or the right. Oh, right, but in principle, I would have four choices. I don't add the phase, I add it on one side, the other, or I add it in both. And I can always switch it from one side or, or the other, or add it to both sides by uh, by doing this phase and party transformation. Okay. Uh, that's the so this this is a, this is a, an anomaly. It's just not an anomaly in, in the symmetries that, that we are gauging, but it's just that in some symmetries that effectively act the same way. But then can I change my statement earlier? <coughs> say they are deeper by the summation of minus to the half left. Yeah, hold on. Right. I just choose one. Right, right. right. So effectively, it's this sign here, which is just R for the left moving spin structure that I'm adding to get credit. Conventionally, I'm adding to get a type two phase. But can I also do the right and not do the left? Like the right, right. But then by by doing yeah. a space and party transformation, I can move it back and forth. Sure. Or I could have a minus sign in both places, but then I can move yeah. it both. So it's also well known that there's other combinations of the like, RNS partition functions. Can I just make sure? Is it true that if I deeper, if I have a, there's two theory deeper by a space-time maybe parity, 
And uh, can I say that the two series just given by a trivial gap from your insulator? That's not the SP, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure what I don't know. I, I will have to think about that. Uh, yeah, maybe we can, we yeah, can sure. discuss later. Okay, so, so we know that there's other uh, combinations of these partition functions which also, also yield something modular invariant. So these are known as type zero strings. And in a sense, these are simpler than, than the type two strings because we are only gauging one spin structure. And, and we saw that, uh, that the, the Morrison group for, for, a sin, for just having a skin structure of two manifolds is a single to two, which is generated by R. So there are two theories. One is uh, type zero B, where I just have uh, like the sum over all lines, and they just have the mod square because left and right are the same. And then uh, zero A that has this insertion of the of the F R by. And again, this is just going to give me minus sign, a minus sign difference when, when I get the wrong one side. So these things are also more by computer functions. These theories are a bit more familiar, but just to comment about them, they have a bosonic space-time spectrum. So uh, basically you're getting you, rid of all the like NSR spectrum. You call them A and B, I use. Is that a suggestion that these are supposed to be mirrored to each other? Uh, like some so they're related by T duality. Yeah. It is? Yeah. yeah. How? It, well, actually, it's easy to see, again, because of this. So if, if I think about how T-duality acts, it basically <coughs> acts by, uh, by um, changing the bundle, changing the time and space for the, for the bosons, but I'm also adding a minus sign to, to some fermions, and effectively that also generates this R invariant. Uh, oh, but I thought this are all Euclidean theory, so what yeah, well, it means space and time. Okay, you can think about it in, in, in Terms. I'm just switching like the I'm, I'm, I'm swapping the two directions of the torus. Like oh, I see. I see. So these are the sort of two D version of mirror symmetry. Uh, I can think of it that way. Where your 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 T your space time swap is on the torus. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know so much about mirror symmetry. I can explain it basically. Yeah. Maybe we can do something. Okay, so just, just that comment, so the, the space-time spectrum is bosonic, so there are no fermions in space-time. And also some nice feature is that the ramon Roman fields are double. So you have actually uh, two copies of each ramon Roman field, so we have the usual ones in type 2A and type 2B, but now there's two copies, and uh, uh, correspondingly there's two types of brains. And one set of brains couples electrically to one set of ramon Roman fields and magnetically to the other, and, and vice versa. So let's talk about unrelated strings and where the Kitaev chain plays a role. Uh, so again, what we mean by unrelated strings, we are engaging worship party or pen reversal. And this means that uh, when we are doing a closed string, or calculating some closed string object, we need to sum over the Klein model. And for open strings, we also need to sum over the mobile string. And, and in order to do that, we put some NSR theory on this space that um, but this worksheet, we, we, we need to put fermions on an unrelated manifold, right? And there are several ways of doing that. Um, so the, these different ways are called different spin structures, and you can think of them as, like, there's two different ways of centrally extending O n by some Z2, which basically is fermion number. Uh, and so when you do spin, there's a single way of doing this, but it turns out that there are two ways of doing this uh, for um, when you have a reflection ball. And then, just like for spin structures, there's some obstruction. Uh, so you might not have a pin plus or a pin minus structure as a manifold. And uh, for pin plus, it's just like spin structures. So if W2, uh, second staple in the class of the tangent bundle, is not zero, then you cannot put pin plus spinners on, on that manifold. And if this combination uh, is not zero, then you cannot put pin minus spinners. Okay, it turns out that this thing is always zero in two dimensions, so for any 2D surface, we could always put uh, big minus uh, spinners, but it's well known. And, and what is the difference like in terms of the like physics operation between these two things? Uh, well, it's basically how like both worship party and Kangaroo, so what do they square to? 
time. So in here, they both have to square to one, right? But once we extend it by Fermi number, they could square to something which is at the one or Fermi number. So there's two choices, and each one of these corresponds to uh, to, uh, to which type of pin structure. So you would say, okay, so there's two types of pin structures. One of these should be uh, like type one theory. Turns down that it, it turns out that this is not the case. So um, um, so I, I will focus on the pin minus. Uh, structures, so I call this type zero minus strings. I already uh, spoiled the surprise, but uh, but uh, these are all uh, uh, unoriented versions of the type zero pins. Uh, so the, their class, there's a Z8 classification of the string theories that corresponds to the Z8 classification of pin minus uh, coordinates group, two dimensions, it's, which is generated by this ABK invariant that I will talk about. Um, and and if I have an even number of copies of this guy, then uh, that is a zero, an, an orientable of type zero A theory. And if I have an odd number of copies, that is an orientable of, of type zero B. Uh, and, and bits of pieces of these theories have appeared in the literature, but, but uh, no, nowhere in, in this unified form. And, and uh, also, it was uh, like different papers say different things uh, about what you can do with these things on orientables. But, uh, so this is the, the, the uh, better way to think about it, and we'll see that it's also useful for thinking about paper rates. So what is this ABK variant? This is the probability <coughs> description of the type chain uh, for typical by time reversal. Okay, so again, this is some TQFT, and we know that time reversal forbids a mass term that we usually use to gap the ordinary type chain, but there is some like fermium term that can gap uh, uh, and, and that corresponds to the ZH classification. Uh, and it's also worth noting that four copies give the bosonic SPT that we see here. Uh, so again, this thing just gives a minus sign of on an array of surfaces, and, and this will be the difference between like two types of oriented poles. Okay, so if I think about the Mobius strip, that that minus sign has to come from omega acting on the chunk pattern factors. So if I have an extra minus sign, that's going to change from orthogonal to symplectic change points. But I think there should be full fermion chunk. Maybe not. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, that's right. That's right. But you need eight fermions to write that for fermion interaction. Yeah. Eight to check for the full fermions. Right, right, right. Uh, but actually, this is compared to size. Because earlier you said double pin, you have a two generator. One is related to R. Uh, so this is for dividend, right? Uh, right. So my point here is that the, uh, you know, the up is similar to key type chain, and as you just say, full copy of key type chain is related to the whole thing chain, which is related to WRTM square. Mm -hmm. But it looks like you put this two as two different generators. No, no. So I'm I'm discussing the pin minus case. Yeah. Right. No, the the, the the. You talk about double pin. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, so just now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to make the comment that, that there is a string theory that corresponds to having a type chain on the, on, the, on the worksheet with time reversal, and that is, uh, this is unoriented type pin minus, <coughs> unoriented pin minus type zero. Okay. Uh, so let me talk now about uh, spin structure for type one. Okay, so it, it, but there's a problem with having only a pin plus or a pin minus structure. So why there was no hope that you could get a type one string from, from the inputs. And the reason is because if you have a pin minus or a pin plus structure on, on the boundary of the Mobius strip, then that forces the periodicity of the of the boundary to be never short order amount. But we know that uh, that uh, uh, type two string or type one strings, we can have both like drum and left short sectors on the post. So there was no chance that these structures would give us the, uh, the, the, the type one theory that we know, which is the uh, unrated version of type two. And basically, this means that we need to, a way to put pinners of pin plus and minus on a pin minus plus minus four. Because uh, we need to have like both kind of uh, of, of, of spinners in order to have type one. Okay, so the solution to this is um, is to uh, put uh, what we call a dipping structure, uh, 
and essentially it's a situ extension of this, where I can think of this as just a, a usual uh, orthogonal group, and this is the, Z, the Karel Zitu bundle, or Karel Zitu symmetry that I was talking about. Uh, and there is two ways of, of thinking, so one can also think of, of, of this uh, as related to both pin plus and pin minus, so this thing contains both pin plus and pin minus. Uh, but per perhaps the, the, the better way to think about it is that there's some obstruction class, which is W2 plus A W1, where A is just the Z2 ratio. And uh, so this is if we're, we're thinking about uh, putting things in a pin minus manifold, where I could have a W2, which is non-zero, and, and, and the same for, for, for pin uh, minus. And the intuition here, it's very similar to what people do when, when you cannot put spinners and you don't have a manifold which is a spin, but you still want to put some formulas on it, and then there's it, and we'll add the extra minus sign that that, uh, uh, that was an inconsistency. And so you can, when you have an unrelated manifold, you have another choice. Instead of making W2 of whatever bundle you have, equal W2 of the extra bundle that you're adding, you have an extra option because you have this, uh, this class and, and with an ordinary page field, you can you can make that zero, and uh, so let me make sure. Suppose I remove one of the Z two from the quotient group, I only get the the total group pin plus or minus, right. which is the two class. The two class are classified by maybe H two, maybe H two, B O Z two. They are two class. But here you change to O N times Z two. So how many type of deep deep pin structure? There's only one, there's but only there's one. there's a way of thinking of it uh, as projecting down to pin plus or projecting down to pin minus. <coughs> so there is a like a homomorphism both to pin plus or pin minus because it contains both. And uh, and then uh, you, that's why we can think of them like one way or the other. Yes. Uh, so this we, we will explain in, in the but, second. Paper. But there's also a trivial extension. Can you, can you just choose trivial extension, like maybe all? No, 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 no. and why, why is that? I mean, there's another way of doing this, which is thinking about the ordinary ON, right, and then extending by... Uh, just the right part of everything. Yeah, by like Z2 times Z2, right? So this is like the two spin structures that, that uh, you want, because we have two types of fermion. But then the, the interesting thing is that the time, like the orientation reversal has to swap this too. That makes it not true. Okay, so it's not just a product. But my point is that maybe if you just write defining DP in structure in this way, it looks like they have several way of extension. But perhaps due to some physical constraint, there's only one choice. Is that possibly the because if you just write suppose I restrict the quotient group at C2 and uh, mm -hmm. sorry, this uh this uh Normal sum to that, Z2 and quotient was all intense to live could be several possible total extension. Right. But, but they you, happen to be but, but physically there's only one thing you, yeah. you are looking at. Right, right. Okay. I think that's correct. Okay. Okay, so what is the SPT for this type one? Uh, so one can think of this digital structure also essentially as a, a, a spin structure on the orientation double cover. Uh, and uh, and then the the the, the SPD is just R of, of of that those constructions on the orientation one. And again, there's only one type of type one theory uh, because we can generate these by the same space time party anomaly that I was talking about earlier. Um, so in principle, you might imagine that you have like two different options that that are related by some space time party transformation. So there's only one type of theory. And 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 this just tells me that there's two types of orientable planes. The type of theory that will carry on cover normal simplification. You, you said I could think of it as pin plus and pin minus, but why is it not Z2 times Z2? No, no. It, 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 it contains pin plus and pin minus, oh. but it's not a product of pin plus and pin minus. So it, uh, in, in 2D, it contains both things as a subgroup, but it's some more complicated object. This group is more So it's not just that you're putting both things, uh, yeah, because it, you might not be able to, because it's a manifold by, by, you might not be able to put it in plus structure. Right. But I think the, the like, intuitive way of thinking about it, 
forget about the particular extension. It's just this idea that, uh, say, I have some W2, which is non zero, and I put in plus headers, I can fix that by having some music bundle that cancels the microsite. All right. Uh, yes. Yeah, whether we can say something about the road stream, so, so yes, because there are some yeah. right between table uh, one and the. So, if you just do the naive counting for heterotic strings, you get like 4 million heterotic strings. Uh, but uh, there should be a bunch of anomalies uh, uh, which we haven't uh, uh, analyzed that reduce them down to, at least in known cases, plus maybe the pre But if you just count, because what you do, you can do some fermionic construction where you have a bunch of like, different uh, state structure for each pair of fermions, basically. And, uh, and then you would have many, many Z2 bundles. And, and this thing just grows. But, uh, but we don't expect that there's four million different hydraulic strings. So, uh, uh, yeah, we, we are looking at that. Uh, can you go one, one slide back? Uh, so it looks interesting that the, the two generator, one is like a guitar chain, one is like a chain. But they are putting into a two, two different generators. They are not direct right. relays. Right. For example, in the usual case, in P minus, low key dash become a whole day chain. So, which means low R, there becomes a real team square. Right, right. But right now, you don't. Right, because I mean, this this is the, if you wish, this is just the um, the Kitaev chain with all the orientation that will happen. Uh, so, in, in that sense, uh, uh, these two things, as I wrote them, they don't live on the same space. It's just a, like a useful way of thinking what. What this, what sign does this SPD get? But maybe there is a more interesting way of thinking about this, just by thinking about the average. Uh, so you would use a head for a sigma. Yeah, for a sigma, sigma, meaning okay. this is a spin structure, but on the orientation level. Yeah. So it's not a spin structure or a pin structure. It's basically a dipping structure of the manifold, but uh, it's just a normal spin structure of the orientation level. By the way, this was known for a long time to read and friends that. This is the right thing to do for okay. So if I want to think of time reversal in this theory, what, what is the square to uh, In this, uh, uh, I think it squares to one, but I forget why. Uh, yeah. What square to one? Uh, what I'm asking what time, if time, time reversal, what is the square to one? Yeah, so I think it squares to one, just from the strict theory, but I forget now why in, in, in this language. But let me think about it. Maybe. Oh. But the W1 TM there, the TM is just the uh, space time. You don't need to double cover. No, right. it's just a space right. time. Uh, okay, so I'm running out of time, so let me tell you a bit about D brains. Uh, okay, so essentially, D brains are the endpoints of open strings. Uh, and uh, we know that from this open string, the spectrum of brain includes some vector bundle. If you have a stack of them, can be some trillion vector bundle. Uh, but we also know that brains can come together and annihilate. And, and this motivates that we actually should be considering equivalence classes of vector bundles up to things that can, you can subtract. And, and basically, this, this motivates that they're classified by, by K theory. But you can ask, okay, which K theory classifies string theory? And of course, we know the spectrum of brains, so you can always like look at the list because there's not so many. In, and, uh, and see which one it is, uh, but uh, we, we want to understand why is this. Uh, and um, also, there's many many K theories that uh, we we thought they didn't uh, uh, classify brains in any string theory. And as I will explain, uh, like there's basically a string theory for every every K of these brains classified by every single K for real brains. Okay, so I will focus on one example. Uh, is the, maybe it's more interesting since the uh, type two case, type one case we, we, we know more about, which is this uh, type zero mi minus uh, theories. So remember that this series carries uh, n copies of this ABK uh, the universal feedback chain on, on on the bulk of the version. Right? But now we are considering open strings, right? and we want to gauge in some our bundles here. Which means that we need to make sure that there is no anomaly overall. Yeah. And this tells us that we will have to couple this to a bunch of fermions on, on the different boundaries to make sure that there is no there is no anomaly in, in, in some of our uh, spin structures. 
thing. And then we know also from, from, from the usual detaching that this will have like uh, n fermions, which will furnish some representation of the Clifford algebra on one boundary, and then n fermions on the other boundary, which uh, would be of the Clifford, like the opposite. Okay. And, and if, I mean, if these things were together, then uh, if there wouldn't be any anomaly, right? But then if we want to write a mass term for like two of these guys, then it's no local, and, and then uh, Again, unless we, we have eight of them. So, so we know that eight is a limit, and this is related to many things that we know in math, like uh, what periodicity. So these these Clifford algebras are, are only interesting mod eight. And also, we know that if we have like certain generators a square to one and certain generators a square to minus one, then the representations are equivalent to just taking the difference and making all of them a square to one. And again, this anomaly is because it's on, it's on one D system. Uh, will will be seen as some like protectiveness of the representation of the of the symmetry group on, on these things on the boundary, and one can just calculate and see that uh, that there is some like these things might not commute, and then t might not square to one on the boundary, and and always either one or the other happen unless you have like eight or zero uh, fermions, and that's for and even for an odd is even worse because there is no gradient, so there is no minus one three f. Uh, on the boundary, and, and in addition, time, time burst and square the minus one. Okay, so there's a bunch of anomalies on the boundary that, uh, that get cancelled by, by the ball test. But this tells us that there have to be uh, n fermions if you have n comes from ABK. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we know that there are like some boundary of open strings, so some deep ring, that carries some more thorough vector bundle with some representation of, of CLN. Uh, and we know that the real K-theory classifies the ways to extend this by some uh, additional generator. Okay. And, and what is this additional generator? Well, you have some extra thing, which is basically fermionic, which is uh, some tachyon field that will tell you about how these brains can or not annihilate. And, and this additional generator and, and all the like, possible tachyon fields correspond to all possible brains that you can have, uh, which means all the possible ways of annihilating this thing. And, um, and, and this tells us that, uh, that, that these brains are, are classified by real K theory. When they have n copies of ABK, then the D9 brains then would be classified by KON. Uh, and again, because we had two boundaries, two, two types of boundaries, this is not left and right, but these were the two types of brains that were associated to, uh, um, sorry, there, there's two types of boundaries which are um, um, the brains that couple through one set of Roman Roman fields or the other. Uh, but because here we have uh, like these guys uh, on one boundary have a certain sign and these on the other have different, we actually have a classification that is like a sum of all this. So if you look at the list, there's many uh, funny combinations and there's many things that don't happen in the traditional type 1 theory. Uh, so for instance, we have like two types of, of torsion brains or, or like certain entries where we have both torsion and torsion brains, whereas in time one we always have either torsion or non-torsion. So basically, really? basically each one comes from like each, each one of the Sorry, were, were, were you making a claim that when you have an open world sheet and you end on two types of brains, they need to couple to the different types of remote remote fields? Yeah. Uh, so no, 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 that's not, that's not what, what, what I meant. And, and I, what I meant to say, actually, if you see which, which classifies um, So the statement is that the the, the fermions living here have to be in a representation and the, uh, of CLN, and the fermions being here have to be represented in CL minus n. So if you run this argument, so that's just like left and right boundaries that's just because of the way right. the orientation. So that has nothing to do with coupling to no, different remote zones. Right. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so this is what you get, uh, and notice also that apart from what I said, uh, you have unoriented theories which have a type brains, so even brains that. Uh, uh, no torsion. Uh, so this 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 brain comes from here. This very useful type one that only has uh, uh, like a D1, D9. I mean, the 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 dot breaks in type you know, is not VPS. Uh, you're talking about space. I'm, I'm talking about non-torsion brains. Yeah. So uh, so stable brains. Well, no, no, sorry. All of these are all of these are uh, stable. 
because of their MK. Yeah, yeah. The question is whether they're BPS or, or, or not. Uh, so the torsion ones are BPS. So the non torsion ones are, are BPS, which are like the integer factors here. And, and the Z2s are the, are the non BPS ones, which are also stable, but, uh, but they're. Uh, so we see that there's like an unoriented theory that has like these zeros, the eights, the sixes, right? Uh, and if I look at just one of the groups, uh, then I see that, uh, and again, this is basically the same spectrum as type one, but here we say, we see that there's like an A-type unoriented theory, which has like the eight brain, and also there's something which is would be like a B-type, but with a different orientable projection, where instead of having a D9, D5, and D1, we have D7s and D3s, and things like that. Okay, so also we can find the, the gauge group just by uh, thinking about some symmetry action on, on some chamfered bundle on the, on the boundary that commutes with both minus one to the F and P, and then you find these results for the different ADK theories. Uh, and, and, and this you might recognize as this odd clock, or whatever you call it, uh, and, and for instance, you also see that the things that differ by four just switch from orthogonal to symplectic uh, as, as expected, because four copies are just Halvin chain or, or these extra sign and the surfaces, and they just switch one type of orientable thing to the other. So you can think of this as a single theory with, uh, with the two types of orientable Zero and one. These are O O n square and O n, right? O uh, is O O U. O. That's O O. That's O O. Yeah. These are the only ones that are U. Yeah. Okay. What about higher dimension brains? It turns out that there's another thing that has the same anomaly. So when we have these D nine D P strings, we have uh, narrow short strings which have Neumann Lewis share boundary conditions. And then if you look at if there's some zero mode that also is a Majorana fermion that has the same anomaly, and we need to add an extra fermion to the boundary uh, as we increase the current dimension, uh, cancel that extra anomaly. Uh, so this fermion just gets added to the uh, to the list of fermions, and we just need to count how many fermions we have overall. And this explains basically why as we go down this list, it's the same thing as going up. So going like like reducing the connection is the same as, as changing the theory. Okay, and there's another way of looking at this, which is using this ABA, ABS construction. So instead of thinking about these strings, we can we can think about the tachyon field itself that uh, will also carry a representation of the future algebra of the orthogonal dimensions. And again, this just gives me a bunch of extra fermions uh, that get added to the list. And, uh, and then you see which, uh, which gauge we must have and uh, which gauge theory describes uh, which gauge. Okay, so the fermions from the from the culture perspective give rise to open strings vertex operator of cards from the gauge fields? Uh, these fermions? Yeah. Uh, so these fermions, basically, you can think of the tachyon, depending on whether you have minus one to it, but you can think of the tachyon as being uh, the off diagonal piece the bundle, which is the product of like B, B something, B something bar. So the gauge fields are the are the diagonal piece, mm -hmm. uh, and this thing is, is the off diagonal piece. So this this related to the vertex operators. Okay. All right. So almost everything I explained can be rephrased in more familiar uh, stringy language. So all these already defaults we have understood now that. Uh, they can be thought as gauging different combinations of worship party, space time moon Fermi number, sorry, space time Fermi moon Fermi number, and worship Fermi number. Uh, so, depending on which product of these things I gauge, I get some of these different theories. And uh, we also use this language uh, and common tools such as like boundary state formalism to rewrite this brain classification and see that everything makes sense. Uh, and, uh, and more but I must say that it was much more fun to be using this uh, SPT language and give up no more reasons than that. Okay, so let me conclude. Uh, so let's summarize what I explained. So I explained why the classification of SPTs provides a systematic way of understanding the choice of faces, partial functions, of the and string theory in particular when we're gauging something. Uh, 
uh, this provided some exhaustive list of, of string theories that you would take starting with the usual open source string. Uh, and, and by considering the SPT phases and open strings that and basically enable the inflow and the cancellation, we had assumed the, the necessity of having boundary fermions, which also tells us uh, that K theory needed to classify uh, different brains. And we also found that there's uh, brains for I didn't explain the other cases, but we already knew that uh, type one, uh, sorry, type two A and type two B, uh, they are classified by the complex gate groups, and then I showed that there's uh, gate theories that correspond to the gate groups. Uh, um, so there's a string theory with brains in every gate group, uh, and there's uh, more applications coming, and I think that this uh, this way of thinking uh, uh, would be would be useful. Uh, Any more questions? Can you figure out the charge lattice that M brains are charged under and using SPT language? Can you figure out the charge lattice? Can you figure out the charge lattice for M theory brains using SPT language? Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, certainly you can think about the charge lattice. Which you can put the tap to A. Right. Want to go back. Sorry, say again? Oh, you're just using m 3 to duality? Yeah, you can, but I mean, that, that that's not good, right? Because <laughs> yeah. you get M2s and M5s, and like, you start with type 2A, then you got to be like, oh, geez, D6 turned into tau not and stuff. I mean, that's not. Yeah. My understanding is that this tells you like which string theory you're talking about and its properties, but then for any particular string theory, I don't know how, how this would be. Just this technology, you need to use the whole GCP. So. Yeah. I mean, sure, but you could like, you know, you don't, you don't. There's nothing specific about two dimensions to SPT technology. You could like look at the world of M2 and start trying to do crap or something like. That. Right, right, but then that would give you different versions of an M2, right? It's, it's not that would tell you like some kind of the dynamics of some M2. It's li literally a different theory that you have on the M2. Like it's like type two and type two B strings are different, okay? and the difference is this SPT and the uh, so, uh, I don't know, I mean, a question you can ask is, are any of these theories related to an M theory in any way? So there's some papers that speculate that uh, you can you can relate some of these type zero uh, theories to, to some funny, like, uh, or like, like doing some, uh, putting an M theory on interval with some path shift or something. Uh, yeah, okay. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see how, if this fit into the usual, like, duality web, General, or if there is like corresponding web for, for all of these theories. Yeah, my, my knowledge of type zero theory just from the textbook, but if you memory correct, some people say there are some people who mentioned that type zero theory is not consistent. So, okay, so all of these type zero theories, uh, except for the pin plus type, yeah. they have a, a, a tachyon in the closed ring sector is basically. Okay. Uh, so, are you saying? So probably that's what you uh, you, you read. Uh, in that sense, it's not that they're not consistent; they're just like same. Uh, but for instance, the, the p plus type; those are fine. So the, the p plus projection actually projects out the question uh, So, so those here is. For the protein class that you mentioned, that it's still stable. It means that they don't have that don't have to be BPS. It means that we could have non SUSE configuration, stable. Mm. Yeah. Theory. Well, uh, if for these type zero theories, what type zero? This this language was more analogy because the space size spectrum is not super correct. You only have bosons. Um, actually, that's not the type. So for thin thin plus type, it's more interesting because you have the two types of brains. So if you consider strings between one type and the same type, then those are an S, and then, then you have uh, bosons, but then if you consider strings between the two types of brains, which couple to different Romano fields, then you have fermionic uh, states in the spectrum. And actually that is important because you, when you do this projection, you, you project that Romano fields down to uh, some combination, which, uh, which is the same as in type to B. Uh, and then you have a self-dual uh, field, which would 
that generates some gravitational anomaly, and, and you need those fermions to cancel that. So there's many things at work in this series. It's just that the type zero minus uh, and the, and the uh, oriented type zeros, they, they still have a closer type. Okay. What are the other applications? Yeah. More applications. Right, so I guess one of them, people have asked about both of them. One of them is thinking about hydraulic theories. Do we know all the hydraulic theories? We know that there's a list of like seven uh, that we should get from this. Uh, uh, the question is, that in, and we understand that those seven correspond to the trivial phases of meaning like different gauges. Uh, so the question is, are all the non-trivial phases removable uh, by some sort of anomaly, or are there really like other hydraulic extremes? But this we, we, we are thinking about. And then also during was mentioning that well, discrete torsion, we, we think about H2 of, of, of the cluster in space of the, of the group, but, uh, but now we know that that's not the whole story for, for uh, SPTs because we have Fermi's in the so, so we don't know everything about strings of our Cool. Yeah, so I Any more questions? Not uh, let's meet uh, next next week on Wednesday, Thursday, six, Julio. October They'll be hanging around Okay, no, like, the, uh, yes, the, uh, 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 the, uh